Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming to my dissertation defense. I'm Yvan, and I'm going to present my thesis of retinal OCT image analysis using deep learning methods. We will first introduce human retina. This is the human eye. The retina is an approximately 0.5 millimeter thick retinal layer, layer of tissue, and it is center five millimeter diameter region is the macula. Light is focused by the lens and received by the cells on the macula, which provides us with the detailed vision. Structurally, the retina has 10 distinct layers, which have different functionalities as shown in this figure. Imaging the human retina is challenging. Luckily, optical coherence tomography is a non-invasive, non-ionizing imaging modality and provides three-dimensional data which can be rapidly acquired. As shown in this figure, the light source sends out the laser beam through our eyeball and acquires a one-dimensional depth signal, the A scan. The light source then sweeps the laser beam across a line on our retinal fundus to acquire multiple A scans, which forms a 2D cross-sectional image of the retina, the B scan. The 3D volume of the retinal image is a stack of B scans acquired at different locations on the fundus image and is represented as a 3D matrix. Automated retinal layer segmentation from OCT images is an important task. This is the definition of different retinal layers. In our current OCT device, we can see eight retinal layers clearly. The top is the vitreous and the bottom is the chloride. The retinal layer surface segmentation can be used for thickness analysis and the surface-based registration. The thickness of retinal layers are important biomarkers for neurological diseases like multiple sclerosis, MS. Researchers found that the RNFL and the GCL plus IPL thicknesses measured from OCT can be used to assess global disease progression for people with MS. We segment each B scan and obtain the thickness maps over the fundus image. This color image is the GCL plus IPL thickness map. A subject is usually scanned for multiple times across time. Those scans are longitudinal scans. And we can monitor the disease progression by monitoring the changes over these thickness maps. As for segmentation, we can see for the, from the figure that the layer surfaces cannot intersect with each other and they have a strict topological ordering. We want the segmentation to satisfy this anatomical ordering or the topology. Besides retinal layer segmentation, retinal edema, cysts, and drusen, here I would just use lesion to represent them, are also important biomarkers for monitoring disease progression. Here are examples of two diseases, microcyst macular edema, MME, and the dalbatic macular edema, the DME. MME will develop in approximately 5% of people with MS and has been shown to be correlated with MS disease severity. We can see the size, position, and numbers of the lesion are varying and is not following a fixed anatomical topology, which requires less explicit constraints for the automated algorithm. Deep learning or the deep network is a type of machine learning method. The deep network learns the mapping from input image to output segmentation automatically from the training data. The end-to-end data-driven training greatly simplifies the segmentation algorithm development. Meanwhile, the recent deep learning methods have achieved the best performance in most major segmentation benchmarks. And the segmentation speed is a magnitude faster than conventional methods. A widely used segmentation network in medical imaging is UNET. It is a U-shaped network with a contracting encoder and an expansive decoder. The features from the encoder are concatenated with the upsampled features. The network takes the input intensity image and output the segmentation map of the same size with the input. Each value on the segmentation map is the class label of each corresponding pixel on the input image. This is a widely used pixelized labeling segmentation scheme. We use deep learning for OCT image analysis for better performance in accuracy, inference speed, and algorithm flexibility. The most intuitive way for retinal layer segmentation 
is applying an existing deep network like UNet to label each pixel into background layers or lesions. However, this widely used pixelized labeling scheme cannot guarantee the layer ordering as shown in this figure. Some pixels belonging to RNFL is labeled as GCL plus IPL, which results in wrong topology. Meanwhile, the retinal surfaces are not obtained and the segmentation accuracy is limited by the pixel size. Our first contribution is a novel end-to-end -end deep learning framework, which guarantees the correct segmentation topology and outputs structures, smooth and continuous surfaces and achieves sub-pixel accuracy and can perform joint surface and lesion segmentation. This topology guaranteed surface and lesion segmentation is our first contribution. A second problem with random OCT layer segmentation is the segmentation uncertainty, which can cause inconsistent longitudinal thickness measurement. As shown in this figure, a subject A is scanned at one time, and we segment this scan and obtain the thickness values. A week later, this subject is scanned again, and we segment this longitudinal scan independently. However, we can see the difficulty in finding the true random layer boundaries. The noise, artifacts, and the inherent ambiguity of the retinal OCT image can cause the algorithm to have inconsistent segmentation. Assume the true retinal thickness changes caused by disease is the dashed line, and the blue line shows the possible inconsistent longitudinal thickness. Although we can still estimate this trend by averaging thickness statistics over a large population, but this inconsistency can degrade our ability for patient-specific disease progression analysis. To alleviate this problem, our second contribution is a longitudinal segmentation pipeline, which uses the information from other time points. We propose a hidden Markov model to sequentially segment those longitudinal scans, and we use surfaces as prior to improve longitudinal consistency. This longitudinal and the pseudo 3D segmentation pipeline is our second contribution. A third problem involves the inherent limitation of deep learning. The deep networks are often overfitted to their training data. Spectralis and Cirrus are two clinical used OCT scanners. As shown in this figure, a deep network trained on Spectralis scanner can produce good segmentation, but the same network will produce bad results on images acquired from the Cirrus scanner. This is called domain shift problem. We propose a novel test time domain adaptation method, which can adapt the models trained from spectralized images to a serious images. After a quick adaptation, the results on serious image are improved. This is our third contribution. In the following representation, in the following presentation, I will only present the details of the first two contributions due to time limitation. I will first go through the first contribution, topology guaranteed surface and the lesion segmentation. The most straightforward segmentation method is the pixelized labeling scheme, but this cannot guarantee the layer ordering and has other limitations mentioned before. Another line of work is to directly focus on surface pixel classification, like classifying each pixel into surface or non-surface pixel and the post-process with graph methods. The output surface probability map might have discontinuities, and this one pixel wide surface has the extreme surface class imbalance. This segmentation is also limited by pixel size. Usually a handcrafted graph is built on the classifier output and the final structure surfaces are extracted using mean ST cut. Manually building a graph and solve it outside the deep network limits the flexibility of pure data-driven framework. None of the existing deep network can achieve end-to-end -end satisfactory results due to this pixel-wise labeling scheme. So we wonder, is there a way to directly output structured surfaces which is smooth, continuous, and with correct ordering from an end-to-end -end deep network? First, we need to reformulate the representation of retinal surfaces. Instead of using a binary surface mask with the same size of the image as shown in this figure, 
The OCD layer surfaces are Terran-like surfaces, which intersect with each column with one position. As shown in this figure, this unique characteristic of OCT layer let us represent a surface S by its depth position at each column, which is a 1D vector. S can be represented by float values. Thus, the accuracy is not limited by the pixel size. We represent the surface S by n random variables, x1 to xn. Given image i, we want to model surface position probability p and find the most probable axis. However, even if we know this distribution, it's still hard to find the optimal axis in the inference stage because n could be large. So we use the variational Bayesian methods. We model each xi with a qi and try to find the parameters theta that satisfy this equation. We use the deep network with parameter theta to represent those QIs. Given training pairs of images IT and the ground truth simulation XT, we assume those training pairs are sampled from this joint surface and image distribution P. To optimize theta, we minimize the KL divergence between P and Q. This result in this equation which is a standard KL divergence uh, equation. We can remove the items that does not contain theta and have the following equation. We put the product outside of the log. And finally, we obtain this. This expectation term can be removed using stochastic gradient descent, where we use a single data sample to optimize theta. This results in this training loss. If we round xig, the ground truth surface depth position, to integers between row index 1 to r, we can convert the equation to this one. This is a standard multi class cross entropy loss summed over n columns. This means we want the network to select one row index on each column for the surfaces. And this is a classification problem with R classes. After, optimization, after optimizing theta, we have QI represented by the trend deep network. Now we can find the optimal XI for each I independently. Here we use the soft argmax operation, which is the expectation of each QI. An example is shown in the right. QI is a discrete distribution. Each row index has a value from the deep network, meaning the probability that the surface intersects with the column at this position. X1 hat is the expectation of Q1 and is fully differentiable. Meanwhile, X1 hat is a flow value, thus the semitation accuracy is not limited by pixel size. This is for one surface S. For M surfaces, we need to guarantee the topology of those M surfaces. Here we know the topology we want to guarantee is the ordering of the surfaces, where the surfaces above always have smaller depth positions than surfaces below at every column. Since multiple 1D surface position vectors, not multiple 2D probability maps are obtained, we explicitly guarantee the surface ordering using the ReLU activation with this equation. This equation guarantees that SI always has larger value than SI minus one. This topology module is implemented as part of the deep network during both training and testing stage. Now we introduce our network implementation. We input the image and it is normalized as spatial coordinates to a residual unit. A residual unit is basically a unit but we replace the convolutional block with a residual block. The conv M is a convolutional block and it is used to output lesions and layer masks using conventional pixel-wise labeling scheme. Conv S is another convolutional block which outputs the variational probabilities QI. Notice the difference here is that we perform a column-wise softmax to obtain QIs, not channel-wise softmax as used in conventional pixel-wise labeling network. The differentiable soft argmax is used to get the surfaces. 
In the end, the topology guarantee module with the ReLU activation is used to obtain the final surfaces. The training loss is the conventional dice plus cross entropy for this pixel-wise labeling branch. And the KL divergence between P and Q, which is the multiplex cross entropy. We also add a smooth L1 loss for the output surface positions to directly compare with the ground truth surface positions as flow values. We first validated our results on healthy and multiple sclerosis subjects. The data set contains 35 3D OCD images with nine surfaces delineated. The evaluation metric is the mean absolute surface error against the manual. We compared it with oral tools, which is based on a handcrafted graph, and we are better in seven surfaces out of nine. We also compared it with another deep learning based surface regression methods, RNF, and better in seven out of nine surfaces. The unit based relay net method cannot explicitly output structured surfaces. We extract the surfaces by summing up the max, masks since lesion is not present. We are better in eight out of nine surfaces. The last, we can use shortest paths to extract surfaces from our variational probability maps, and our method outperforms it in all surfaces. The qualitative results shows that compared to post-processing like shortest paths, which is only defined on discrete grids. We are able to output structured surfaces, which is smooth and continuous with sub-pixel accuracy. We also validated our results on subjects with diabetic macular edema, where large lesion exists. The data set contains 110 B scans with eight surfaces and lesion delineated. We compared our results with three graph-based methods which had layer surfaces extracted. The table shows the mean surface distance compared with the manual delineation on eight surfaces. We reached the state-of-the-art surface sanitation accuracy. Here are two examples of the sanitation. For images with large lesions, design a graph with varying constraints is hard. But without graph post-processing, a pixel-wise labeling deep network can easily go crazy. In our method, even in images with large lesions or missing surfaces, a layer surface will still be produced to maintain the continuity and their smooth and have correct topology. The lesion sanitation dice is similar to the state of the art, and the surface sanitation will be excluded in further analysis at lesion area. In conclusion, we are one of the first words to apply fully convolutional network in OCT layer sanitation and are the first to address and guarantee the layer sanitation topology. Our, method re our, meth our proposed regression formulation can be applied to other terrain-like surface sanitation problems. For example, the endoscopy images can be converted to our formulation. Our network can output structured surfaces and is efficient with the fully convolutional layers. In the rest of the presentation, I will introduce my second contribution, longitudinal and pseudo 3D sanitation. Our main clinical purpose are monitoring retinal layer changes for people with multiple sclerosis. We want to monitor the mild subject specific retinal layer thickness thinning, about 0 0.5 to 1 pixel per year. This requires a highly accurate and longitudinally consistent sanitation or else the changes caused by the disease cannot be discerned from the sanitation inconsistency. However, the OCT images have highly diffusive and noisy layer boundaries and can be easily affected by artifacts. This figure shows that subject B is scanned twice in a very short time period. We can assume the subject retina is the same in these two scans, but the appearance of these repeat scans are quite different which means the independent measurement of the thickness can be different. This will degrade our ability for patient-specific disease progression analysis. A third challenge is that OCT images are highly anisotropic. From this figure, we can see the resolution in Z, Y direction is 10 times higher than the resolution in the X direction. Most deep learning methods segment those 2D slices independently 
and we ignore the consistency between adjacent slices. To improve the cementation, we should also consider this aspect. In our contribution one, we introduced a deep network for joint surface and lesion cementation. However, the network is based on 2D network, which does not utilize the information from longitudinal scans nor from adjacent 2D slices. To make the cementation more consistent, we extend our 2D cementation method to include two consistencies. We call it spatial consistency and longitudinal consistency. For spatial consistency, we want to segment adjacent slices jointly. The most straightforward way is to extend our 2D unit to 3D unit. However, the 3D convolution kernels treat pixels from all directions equally, but the OCT images are highly anisotropic. Meanwhile, a typical OCT scan is of size 496 by 1024 by 49. Segmenting this whole 3D volume using 3D network will need huge GPU memory. For longitudinal consistency, we want to utilize longitudinal information of the same subject. So the segmentation across time could be more consistent. But what do we mean by longitudinal information? Can we just do a joint segmentation of all those scans? We will introduce our solutions to these two aims in the following presentation. For spatial consistency, our network segments three slices jointly. We avoid 3D convolution, which is unsuitable for anisotropic 3D images and to save GPU memory. A 2D encoder is used to extract features for these three input slices independently. Notice all those slices share the same encoder. Then we use a bidirectional convolutional OSTM to fuse the features from these three slices. The spatial consistency is implicitly learned using this block. An LSTM is a special kind of a recurrent neural network which, which specializes in processing sequential data. A convolutional LSTM is shown in this figure. It is basically an LSTM with convolutions and is developed to process a sequence of input images. The input is xi and hi minus one. Here i is the slice number. XI is the features of slice I extracted by the 2D encoder. The convolutional OSTM will output HI for slice I using three gates, the forget gate, input gate, and output gate. Those gates contain convolution operations, and we will not introduce the functionality of each gate. The output HI is also a 2D feature map, which is called the hidden state in recurrent neural networks. The features of the next slice xi plus one will use this hi, which contains the information of the xi. By this means, the output hi plus one will contain information from its previous slice. Then we revert, revert input sequence and the output will contain information from its next slice. This is called bidirectional. The output H's now contain information from its adjacent slices and are processed by the same 2D encoder, decoder independently. The output features Fi minus one, Fi and Fi plus one have the same spatial size with the input slices. Using a convolutional LSTM for anisotropic 3D image segmentation is well explored in the literature and we applied it in our application. As for longitudinal segmentations, most of the existing work will register all the longitudinal scans to make them spatially aligned. After, registra after registration, each pixel will have corresponding pixels in all other longitudinal scans. Each spatially aligned pixel is considered an observation through time and it can be used to suppress noise. The next step can be deep learning or other statistical methods for joint segmentation. However, the core registration is challenging for OCT images. The registration requires interpolation, but the anisotropic resolution will make the interpolation unreliable. As shown in this figure, if we interpolate the OCT scans to be isotropic, which is 10 times upsample in one direction, we can observe those interpolation artifacts. 
Meanwhile, even after registration, training a deep network to jointly segment those scans are computationally infeasible due to the huge GPU memory usage. To solve those problems, we propose a pipeline inspired by hidden Markov model. For a subject scanned longitudinally for n times, the hidden state is the true layer surfaces S1 to Sn. And each 3D OCD image X1 to Xn is the observation for each hidden state. When using an HMM model, we need a state transition probability and an emission distribution. But ST are 3D layer surfaces and XT are 3D OCD images. There are high dimensional data and we do not know these two distributions. Luckily, we have a deep network that can be trained to model all kinds of different distributions. The question is, is it possible for our deep network to learn this state transition distribution? We point out the change from ST minus one to ST is related to different factors like environment and medical treatments. So this distribution is changing from time to time. However, all those factors are unknown to our deep network. So theoretically, we cannot model this transition probability accurately. But since we are focused on MS subject and we know the retinal layers are changing slowly, we can assume ST and ST minus one are close to each other and the transition distribution can be approximated without knowing those factors like medical treatment. Given training images X1, to Xn and the ground truth segmentation S1 star to Sn star. So how should we train a deep network phi? Let's consider this scenario. We are monitoring a patient. This patient has been scanned every six months. Now he comes again and look at a new OCT scan. What we want to do is to use all available past information to segment this current scan. Now, after segmentation, we can perform analysis to decide his current disease stage and modify the treatment. So, we can write down the following equation. We use all the past information to find the optimal current segmentation ST. We define this joint distribution as alpha T, which is a function of ST. We will derive our deep network phi from here. We add back ST minus one and split the alpha T into this equation. In an HMM model, XT is only dependent on ST. So we get the following equation. We also know ST is conditioned on ST minus one and we can get this equation. Since we have the ground training ground truth ST star we define alpha as the delta function, delta st minus st star for derivation simplicity. Now we can simplify the equation to this. This is a pretty standard formulation. The first term is the likelihood of the emission distribution. And the second term is the prior or the transition function. Since xt is dependent on st, we can add back st minus one star and have this equation. We can put xt to the condition. And finally, we have this. Since alpha t is a function of st, so we can remove the pxt given st minus one star. From this derivation, we get this equation. Given xt and ground truth st minus one star, we want to find the optimal st that maximize, ma maximizes alpha t. We use a network phi to output the optimal st. Since we know the ground truth st star is the optimal, we optimize theta to satisfy this equation. Now we only need to train a segmentation network that takes into xt st, st minus one star as input and optimize it to output ST star. Uh, all those derivation is trying to answer what is the input to our deep network. It doesn't mean that our deep network has those probabilistic meanings. 
let's think from the deep learning perspective in this figure x is the, the image is from xt the oct scan from the t's visit the green surface is the cemetery st minus one from the previous visit and the registered to the current image note that we change our notation from st minus one to st minus one r to represent the registered surfaces the red st is the cemetery of the current visit we can see the green surfaces are close to the red and it can provide a good prior. The intuition behind is that the boundary in the current observation XT can be noisy and ambiguous and it will be easily affected by the artifacts. As shown by the arrow, the red node boundary here is not visible due to imaging problems with handless fiber layer. Segmenting this surface only relying on images may cause measurement variations. But given this ST minus one, the deep network can learn to rely on the previous sanitation on those areas to improve longitudinal consistency. In deep learning, this ST minus one can also be considered as attention maps that tell us tell our network where to look at. That's why we need to assume that ST minus one is close to ST. So we train a network phi to output current sanitation ST based on current image XT and previous cemetery ST minus one. Now we introduce our implementation. We first convert the prior service cemetery ST minus one to layer masks. And we concatenate those layer masks with the feature maps extracted using the 2D unit with convolutional LSTM. And apply the joint service and lesion cemetery formulation described in our first contribution. The conv S is the surface output block with the surface regression formulation, and the conv M is the pixel-wise labeling block. The training loss is also the KL divergence plus the dice plus cross entropy, and the L1 loss as described in our distribution uh, in our contribution one. For longitudinal scans X1 to XT from the same subject. We use the trend network phi to summon the first visit X1 without any sanitation prior and the register S1 to X2. The registered S1 and X2 are used to generate S2. This process is repeated until the last visit. We call this a forward pass, but this chain starts with S1, which is generated with no prior and may have sanitation errors. So we also propose a backward pass where we use the sanitation ST from the last visit to segment backwardly until the first visit. We use the sanitation in the backward pass as our final results. We point out that the forward backward pass is the classical algorithm to find the most likely state for any point in an HMM model. Our forward backward pass is inspired by this algorithm, but does not have the same probabilistic meaning. The forward algorithm, forward backward algorithm, and the decoding algorithm like Viterbi used in HMM are not applicable in our deep, deep learning settings. A more detailed discussion of our method and those classical methods are dis discussed in my thesis. We train our deep network on longitudinal scans from 176 subjects using serial scanner and 17 subjects on spectral scan. Since we don't have manual delineation on longitudinal data, our surface sanitation ground truth is the oral tool result, which is a state-of-the-art graph-based method. We evaluate our method from three aspects, consistency on repeat scans, longitudinal sanitation stability, sanitation accuracy against the manual. For the first part, we want to evaluate thickness measurement differences caused by the algorithm. We validate our algorithm on a data set with 10 healthy subjects. Each subject is scanned twice in a week. We can assume that the retinal layer thickness of the subject is not cha changed for these two visits. So we measure the retinal thickness differences between these two scans using our sanitation algorithm. This difference is the measurement error from the sanitation algorithm. A better algorithm should generate smaller differences between these two scans. We compare with oral tools, which is a graph-based method. It is used as training ground truth for our network, fine. We also compare with deep single, 
where, where the input is the image XT only without using any longitudinal information. The deep forward is our forward pass algorithm. The deep backward is our forward backward pass results. Here are the results. The table is the mean and the standard deviation of the thickness differences of those repeated scans. The dashed macular in the table means the layer thickness is averaged over the whole macular region. We can see the deep network, including deep single, deep forward, and deep backward, perform better in six out of eight retinal layers, even the networks trained from the ARA. The GC plus IPL layer thickness is one of the most important biomarkers for tracking MS disease progression. And the deep backward achieves the best GC plus IPL layer consistency. The overall results is the mean of the absolute value of each column. And we can see the overall repeat scan th thickness difference is decreasing from aura to deep single and from deep forward to deep backward. This shows that the longitudinal pipelines improve in the results. For the second part, we want to evaluate the stability of longitudinal thickness changes. We evaluate our method on 75 longitudinal scans from 13 subjects with multiple sclerosis. We measure the root mean square fitting error for each MS subject, as shown in this figure. A subject has five longitudinal scans and is segmented by two methods, the blue and the yellow. Since we don't know the true trend of retinal changes, so we fit a line to the measurements from each method. The RMSE is used to measure the root mean distance from each point to this fitted line. The smaller RMSE means better longitudinal sanitation stability. Here in this example, the blue data points are closer to it is fitted a line than the yellow and is considered to be a more stable sanitation method. This is the RMSE results averaged over these 13 subjects with MS. We can see the deep network achieves better RMSE over all layers. The deep network backward achieves better RMSC in seven out of eight layers. It also achieves the best overall RMSC. And the deep, back, deep forward also improves over aura and the deep single. This shows that the longitudinal pipeline can provide a more longitudinally stable segmentation compared to independently segment all the longitudinal scans. The third experiment is the standard evaluation method for sanitation algorithms. We compare surface sanitation with manual delineation. Since we do not have longitudinal data set with manual delineation, we use a data set with 20 scans with manual delineation. Each OCT scan is from a different subject. We compare the mean surface distance between the algorithms, al algorithm sanitation and the manual delineation. The first two sanitation algorithms are described before, but since this data set does not contain longitudinal scans, thus no sanitation prior can be used. We used all results as the sanitation prior. We denote it as deep forward star. This is the mean absolute surface distance averaged over 20 scans without any prior we can see the aura surpassed the deep single in overall and is better in six out of nine surfaces. If we use the aura results as a segmentation prior for the deep network, the deep four star is better in six out of nine surfaces and achieves the best overall accuracy. Here are some visual results. The red is the segmentation prior from the previous visit, S1. S1 is the sanitation of the first visit, which does not have any longitudinal prior, thus is less robust. Yellow is the sanitation using only the current image X2, and blue is the sanitation using both the image X2 and the prior sanitation S1. From this figure, we can see the red S1 can have sanitation errors, but we do not know if the prior has caused the blue sanitation to be wrong because the yellow sanitation without using this prior is also wrong. Here we can see the blue follows the red and is correct, but the yellow is wrong and far apart. 
This is another example showing how the red can guide the blue. This is the backward pass results. The orange is the backward sanitation prior from S3. And the green is the sanitation using the current image and the disk prior. We can see the wrong sanitation in the forward pass is corrected in the backward pass. But we can also see that the prior surface sanitation is not aligned well with the image boundary. This shows that the now, but the green is following the image boundary. This shows that the network can balance the image features with the sanitation prior by itself. This is an example showing the 3D spatial consistency and the, the effect, efficacy of convolutional RSTM. This is the deep single result where we use no prior. Our network segments three slices jointly. In this example, slice 12, 13, and 14. Notice our network is a 2D network and the information between slices are only learned via the convolutional OSDM. In this example, slide 13 is intentionally set as blank. The output sanitation should be completely noisy if not utilizing adjacent slices. But slide 13 has a reasonable sanitation, which shows that convolutional OSDM is using information from adjacent slices. In conclusion, we are the first work in deep learning based on longitudinal retinal layer sanitation. Applying existing longitudinal pipeline, we face these two challenges, the unreliable 3D OCD image registration and interpolation, and the huge GPU memory usage. We solved the first problem using surface registration. The longitudinal information is carried by the segmented surfaces, which can be easily interpolated. Meanwhile, by using the hidden marker model, we can segment each 3D OCD image sequentially and avoid the huge GPU memory usage. Overall, we have three contributions in our thesis, and today we presented the first two. We developed the end-to-end -end deep learning framework for joint lesion and retinal surface annotation. The smooth, continuous surfaces with correct topology are directly obtained by our novel formulation. We also extended this work and developed the first longitudinal OCT sanitation network. The OCT image registration and the GPU memory problems are avoided by the surfaces registration scheme and the hidden market model assumption. Here are the papers, me as the first author. And here is the clinical work that I'm part of. And here are the other works that I participated in including OCT, OCTA, synthesis, cerebellum sanitation, and uncertain measurement in deep learning. Here are the words that I've received in the past five years. I want to say thanks to my advisor, Jerry Prince, my ACL lab mates, my friends in Hopkins, and my family. Thank you all.